So welcome back everybody. This is Paul again from the YouTube site You Can Learn to Fly and I've made a number of series about flight planning and in my own instruction and practice I've had to do a number of flight plans for my cross countries but I've tried to learn a lot more about planning on my own by actually doing some exercises. So I thought I'd demonstrate one here. I used a simulator and I used real charts and I try to get a really good plan in my mind before I even take off in the simulator. And then I like to sit in the simulator without any distractions and fly the different legs. So I thought I'd share with you what I do. The FAA flight plan, this is a standard form, number 7233, and it has a number of sections on it that you need to know. All this is important information and there's definitely a requirement to know this particular information when you make a flight plan and to plot out your legs. All pilots know this system here. But there's limits to this form that I've discovered for my own personal use. Obviously I need to know this information and file it with the FAA if I do a flight plan. But there's not a lot of room back here and there's things that I like to know. So I decide that I will use more of uh, an additional kind of flight plan. I've been experimenting here. This is one that I used, uh, for example, my destination is over on this side and my departure is over here. And this is basically like an elevation map here. And uh, I have uh, different frequencies I need and I want notes here, notes about terrain, landmarks, altimeters, altitudes, uh, and then weather notes as well, and some information about alternates. So what I do here is I write down the frequencies, and once I've entered them into the radio on my uh, aircraft, I make a check mark. So I know, okay, that one's been entered in. So that's one way I've decided to... Uh, I have another form that I designed that I'm experimenting with along the same lines. All the main information, the aircraft, fuel, load, initial heading, date, pilot, so on, type of aircraft. Over on the left side, the departure, on the right side, the destination. And again, I make my waypoints and I make a timeline here. I enter in a time and I make some notes, course, heading. Uh, anything I might not want on that line and I make a series of basically legs. So this is all the stuff that I've been using to help my own navigation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here a plan uh, that I'm going to do in the simulator and we'll do it together. I'll do it live and it may take several segments, maybe a half an hour to do this whole thing. But I'll try to make it quick and I'll edit it. A couple of things. First of all, I like to have some piece of paper. got to have paper. And I like to use uh, grid paper because for aviation and precision and entering frequencies, there's little boxes here. And you can easy, easily make some fields and some data points. And then you can make lines and you can make boxes and so on. So, uh, first of all, I always put my date up here. And today's the 22nd of August and uh, 2012 here. So... I'm going to make it pretty simple, kind of a standard cross country, but it's going to include some interesting terrain um, that <clears throat> is going to challenge our, our skills. And that's the kind of situation that I like. I like to practice something that's going to stress me a little bit. And here we have here, we have some mountainous terrain here. We're going to leave from an airport in northeastern uh, Washington State called Darrington. It's at an elevation of 543 feet. It's a lighted runway with 2,500 feet. It's a local little airport. We'll pick an aircraft that can uh, take off from there and do this particular job. Then we're going to go over here to a little state park in a valley. Uh, so we have to cross some terrain. We have to navigate, and that's going to be a very difficult uh, challenge for us. And we land in this valley here, and we're going to drop off some passengers and pick up some more passengers. And then we're going to go fly over to this location over here, a little airport called Lost River. A private little field here, and this for our exercise, this is the challenge. We have to get up into this little airport at 2,400 feet, um, a short field, and land there and drop off some passengers. 
we're going to camp there and then we'll have uh, a lighter plane for our return trip back to Darrington. So the first thing I got to do is I got to kind of map out um, my route. There's a number of really important things that go into a flight plan. Ultimately the goal is safety. It wouldn't be good to even take off if we aren't going to get to our destination. And if we can't get to our destination, we need to have a plan B. We need to find out uh, and dis discover what our alternatives are and what other airports I might want to go to and so on. So, pilot condition, obviously. Can I do the legs four hours or whatever? The aircraft, condition, load, fuel, obviously the weather. Our routes. Now, a route isn't that very simple because sometimes you think, well, i got to go straight over there and just draw a line on a map, and that will be our route. But not necessarily because in this particular case here, we draw a line straight across here, and uh, we see that on the sta nautical miles, it's going to be 35 miles direct. But there's some obstacles. So there is a valley. And there's some lower hills here. This is already 5,600 feet, so right away we got to go up 5,000 feet just to cross this thing. And that means probably spiraling out of our airport, perhaps. Or we can try a different tactic here. We could go around to the south a little bit where we have a longer valley that we can slowly ascend. And then rather going over this peak here, uh, at 10,000 feet, we can cross a ridge here and then proceed down this valley and come down this river. So we have to think a little bit about that, what we're going to do. The same thing is when we take off from this valley here at 1400 feet, we're going to have to ascend and there's some peaks around here and we might want to go down this valley and come across over there by that means instead of crossing up and getting up to a really high altitude. Okay, so we're going to think about, about that now. We want to measure our distance because if we don't know how, how long it's going to be, we can't calculate our fuel or time or anything. So one gadget is very popular is to get a gadget like this uh, and it rolls around and it measures uh, on a scale that you can track against your ruler and then you can using the scale on here determine how many miles it is. Instead of having to draw a bunch of short lines, you can use this device. Now, let's figure this out here a little bit. I want to figure out where I'm going to go. And a lot of people, my age pilots, they need the glasses. Make sure you take your pair. Even if you don't really need glasses, this is only a 1.25 reading glasses, very simple, but I'll tell you, it makes a big difference in, in some of these uh, charts. You definitely want to know what the heck's going on here and what um, is the best route. So you need to see some of these details. And definitely, in the mountains, you definitely want to have a lot extra, a lot extra, because you can always burn the fuel off uh, if you need to go down a weight. But if you have that extra fuel, uh, it will really help in some of those ascents and the power uses that you're going to be uh, using on your flight.